The Netflix documentary Becoming follows former First Lady Michelle Obama as she embarks on a nationwide tour for her memoir and engages with young minds and reflects on her life both before and after the White House. The film was directed by Nadia Hallgren, who joins us here today. I'm Charlie Bright of Gold Derby, and the first question I want to ask is, what was the process like to uh, get hired to take on this kind of project? Well, Charlie, I was having a pretty normal day about a year and a half ago until the phone rang and I get a call from Priya Swaminathan, who is one of the heads of High Ground Productions. And uh, she tells me that, you know, Michelle Obama is getting ready to go on this worldwide book tour and that they were floating this idea of documenting it. And, you know, they didn't know yet whether it was going to be a film or it was going to be just something that lived in Mrs. Obama's archive. But if I was interested. And uh, my background is I've been a documentary cinematographer for at least the last 15 years. So, you know, they were looking for someone that kind of had this ability to just jump in with Mrs. Obama that could uh, wear several different hats, uh, do the cinematography, directing and stuff like that if necessary and could work with a very small footprint. So. I think, you know, that was one of the reasons how I got this initial call. And then, of course, I had to have a few more calls until I was actually in front of the former First Lady uh, a few weeks later. So uh, one of the uh, most striking things about this documentary is that you have, uh, is that we get to see uh, Sasha and Malia Obama, and we get to hear him speak, which was very jarring for me because I don't think I've heard them speak in over a decade. And... Uh, I, I'm just curious, was there, uh, was there any apprehension on uh, part of the former First Lady in having Sasha and Malia participate in the project? You know, I think one thing that we agreed on was that uh, we would follow Mrs. Obama as she was living her life. And, you know, she goes on this worldwide book tour during a time when the girls were at school. So they weren't around that much on the road when we were filming. And, you know, Mrs. Obama did ask that we not film the girls at home and you know completely respected her and her family's privacy of course especially considering you know how much this family has given to us as as, as a nation and um so we had that conversation but then you know there were times when malia and sasha came out on the tour and there was never any concern that the camera was there and filming them and they were very candid and open about, you know, just hanging out with their mom and, and we, were, we were allowed to be present for that. So um, what's interesting about this documentary, uh, of, of many interesting things about this documentary, is um, uh, that, you know, we see Michelle Obama in real time try, uh, sort of reconciling with what her role is uh, in our current politics. And I'm wondering, in the time that you followed her, how would you say that she views her role in our current politics? A great question. You know, I think that Mrs. Obama is very much interested in continuing to promote many of the things that she did when she was in the White House, being, you know, girls' education and um, fitness and health and things like that. And I think that that's still where Mrs. Obama uh, puts a lot of her energy and sees herself in the in the political world. One of the other interesting things that we get to see is uh, her um, speaking with uh, groups of young people, particularly young people, uh, particularly young women of color, about um, uh, their experiences and what they're concerned about uh, and what they're hoping to achieve uh, in their lifetimes. And it, it's it seems like she understands that really uh she is that she's serving as like this role model for the next generation and trying to prop up the next generation of leaders and i was wondering if you could just speak uh to uh how she views uh, uh what the next generation should be in terms of leadership absolutely so i mean you know i i can't speak for mrs obama but from my observations of seeing her with young people i mean she loves young people she loves being around young people um it really brings her a tremendous amount of joy and she's really thoughtful about the way that she uplifts young people and connects with them on you know, their various concerns about the future or, you know, just what it's like being an awkward teenager, if you will. And, 
you know, she really, uh, I think what she does is she really kind of transfers this confidence um, to, to young people and especially young women. Um, and it was really so wonderful to watch her do that. I think she has a special quality in the way she does that that I had never seen before. And, you know, she puts a lot of faith and a lot of, um, you know, uh, expectation on young people. You know, she, she knows that the future belongs to them and it really encourages them to work hard to create the world that they want to live in. So uh, the, uh, the other thing that I think is so striking about this documentary is just how natural uh, Michelle Obama is in almost any surrounding and the way that she interacts with people, you know, whether they're it, whether, whether they're, you know, a group of, you know, young people in high school or uh, older or older women at church, which was another one of my favorite scenes. Um, do you think, do you think, do you, do you think that she has anything? I know that she doesn't like politics that much, but you, you got it. You got to sometimes wonder when you see her in that sort of situation that is that she has to be, that you have to be thinking, man, she, she would have been great in politics. Does she ever sometimes think that as much as she may detest how politics is done these days? You know, it's never something that we talked about, but you're right. She has an incredible way with people. And the truth is that she just loves people. She really loves interacting with people, meeting new people. She has a genuine curiosity in others. And, you know, for her, this is a really exciting opportunity. The moment that we were with her was very special. It was, you know, her first time out in the world on this big scale two years after leaving the White House. And so, you know, her life before she went into the White House is so dramatically different from the way it is now. And we were really on this journey with her and able to see, you know, just who she is and connecting with people in that way is, is really part of her. So segueing into um, uh, uh, your career, uh, this is uh, your first feature-length project, correct? It is, yes, that's correct. So, I mean, what has it been like to have this sort of film serve as your first feature? This has been a really incredible journey for me uh, that becoming a documentary about, you know, a historical first lady, the first black first lady of the United States, Michelle Obama, one of the most loved and most popular individuals in the world, uh, is my first feature. It's still kind of hard to wrap my head around that um, because it's almost a dream. But, um, you know, I think in many ways I have, I like to see it as I've been working to prepare for the opportunity that was given to me for my whole life. I've worked in uh, filmmaking and documentary filmmaking for over 17 years. I started out as a production assistant. I went on to be an AC and then a cinematographer and then started directing a few years ago. So um, I really felt uh, prepared for this opportunity. And um, it's just, it's, it's so exciting to me that uh, Mrs. Obama chose me to, to you know, make this film. With. So um, uh, one of my favorite things to ask documentary filmmakers is, you know, you guys, uh, you have so many hours of footage that you uh, put, that you have uh, at the end of uh, when you're putting the project together. And I'm curious as to uh, whether there were any moments that you were really fond of that for one reason or another, you just weren't able to include in the final cut of the film. Yeah, so, you know, one thing that I learned about Mrs. Obama during making this film is just actually how funny she is. And you especially see that humor come out uh, when she's with her family and her brother, Craig. You know, they kind of have this very, you know, big brother, little sister playfulness to them. And I think audiences really enjoyed that. And there were so many more of those moments that, you know, we had to either cut down or take out because, you know, you have 90 minutes to tell a story. And there were so many great jokes that were, you know, uh, on the same level of funniness that you see in, in, in the movie now. And so it was a little agonizing every time we had to get rid of one, but um, it was they, they were really fun to watch and to experience. Uh, what was the most surprising thing you learned about Mrs. Obama from the time you spent following her? What 
I felt was the most surprising thing about Mrs. Obama was having an opportunity to spend time with her family. And really, uh, I think that when you watch any individual with their mom or with their siblings, you learn so much about them and you learn who they really are. I think we all sort of like revert back to, you know, childhood years when we're surrounded by family members. And it was just such a, a pure, genuine, fun, warm experience to be around Mrs. Obama and her family. And, and, you know, I felt just at home when I was with them too. And, and I think to me that that was really surprising. Um, uh, I was wondering if you could also speak to uh, your experience with uh, her mother, uh, who's always been an interesting uh, figure because she moved in with them uh, in the White House and was helping to take care of uh, Sasha and Malia at the same time that, you know, she's serving in the role of First Lady and uh, Barack is serving as president. Uh, I was wondering if you could speak to uh, uh, what it was like uh, 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 filming her uh, in this whole thing. When I first met Mrs. Robinson, it was very early on in filming. It was actually backstage in Chicago in the first show that uh, Mrs. Obama did for her book tour. And what I did know about Mrs. Robinson was that she had been known to, you know, not really be in the limelight as much, to sort of shy away from cameras and interviews. And, you know, she really uh, appreciated her privacy. But of course, you know, as I, as I got to meet her and know her, and she's so wonderful and so funny, I was like, I have to, I have to film her. And, you know, we, we started to build a rapport, but it was still really early. And I remember the first time I kind of pointed the camera at her, she was like, don't you point that thing at me. And it was like really funny. And I was like, oh man, like I thought, I thought she was gonna say yes. I thought I warmed her up enough. Um, but as we, you know, we gradually spent time together and got to know each other um, without the camera rolling, uh, she she warmed up to it up until we we film a scene where we go back to Mrs. Obama's childhood home on Euclid Avenue in the south side of Chicago. And for me, that was a really special moment, uh, not only to see Mrs. Obama's childhood bedroom that is still pink and has a doll on sitting on the bed, which was amazing, but as we walked through the house, Mrs. Robinson really got quite emotional uh, reminiscing about the experiences that she had there raising her children in this tiny apartment, uh, living above a family member and, you know, thinking about the loss of her husband and, and what that was like. And, and she got quite emotional. Mrs. Robinson got quite emotional in that scene. And I think for me, um, and she was very comfortable with me filming that and, and being there and the camera being there. And so for me, I felt like that was such an, an indicator of how our relationship had grown over the period of time that we had known each other. And it was really moving to me. One other thing that I'm uh, curious about uh, is, uh, you know, it's very striking hearing Michelle Obama talk about um, the expectations that were, you know, put on uh, her and her husband as the first black first family and uh, the and of course with the idea of being the first black anything uh, and and the uh, uh, the weight that that can carry and also in how you're viewed by the public at large and I'm wondering if if she still carries that in terms of you know being the now she's the first she's the first former she's the first black former first lady uh, does she still carry that uh, uh, sort of weight around with her in terms of how she uh, approaches being in public? You know, I, I definitely, I can't, it's not something that I specifically asked Mrs. Obama about this moment in time, but I think uh, from my own experience as a Black person, you know, I think that's something that never leaves you, no matter what you've accomplished in life. And um, uh the, the, the feeling that you can let that, that guard down or that the expectation isn't always going to be higher. I, I imagine that that's, that's always, that will always be with you. It's, it's so ingrained. It's like, you, it's not something you can just shed necessarily uh, because you're like, oh, I, I accomplished that. Like, you know, my work is over and she clearly doesn't, you know, feel like that. And, and it's important for her to, you know, maintain uh, being a role model for, for all people these days. So I'm sure that's something that's so important for her. 
Well, Nadia, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you all the best this Emmy season. And to all of our viewers, please make sure to uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel to get all our latest content. And don't forget to go to goldderby.com and use the Gold Derby app to make your predictions and see if you can outsmart the top prognosticators in Hollywood. Thanks so much, Nadia. Thanks so much, Charlie. Thanks for having me.